I'm Robbie Ross from Liverpool. And in this short talk, I'd like to give all glory to God. And I've had a lovely blessing of a priest. Roughly in 2000, I went to the Prince of Peace community run by Miles Dempsey, who was very famous with the New Dawn. And in that course, I just met a lad outside him, who started talking to him, didn't know him, and his name was Paul Callahan. 2005, jumping forward, I went to... Locked egg. And after we come off the island, as we were coming off, this lad Paul approached me again. That was the second time I'd seen him. And he said, you're Robbie, aren't you? I said, yeah. He said, Mary wants you on the street. I said, Mary, you? He said, the Blessed Mother. I suppose he hadn't said anything to me. He said she did. She said in Medjugorje, you wouldn't listen to her. Now in Medjugorje, I'd gone in to see Ivan with a crowd of priests. I was the only lay person. And because all that happened to me was that I smelt these roses and basically went unconscious as far as I could make out. But I'd never seen anything. Anyway, I was talking with Paul and we went up to Walmart and we had the locked egg meal and came back home and then the following Tuesday he phoned me and he lived the opposite end of Liverpool to me. And I met him in town in Mother Teresa's house in Seal Street, that's the centre of Liverpool. And we worked out of there to go out on the streets. Now we had a couple of trolleys and it was me and Paul and a lad named Pep. And we went on this route which apparently Our Lady had dictated everything to Paul what to do. How to make the sandwiches, his wife and Christine, she'd made them and away we went down Bull Street and I was just watching what Paul did and we went over to an Indian lad standing there. And to be quite honest with you, he was in a bit of a mess and I just suddenly found myself giving him a big hope to introduce myself. And ever since then, every time I've gone out, I've always hoped these people. I could say that I didn't really understand what I was doing, but God must have guided me because you just give them a cup of coffee or a cup of tea you asked them what sandwich you want, they had the same routine as chicken, ham or cheese. A packet of crisp or two packets of crisp and a couple of chocolates. You handed them to the lads and then you'd say, would you like a prayer? And I would say 80% responded, um, in the affirmative, they wanted a prayer and he went on to the next one. Now, roughly, they were 50 yards apart and they're selling papers and they're sitting there with the begging or whatever they do and, that, you know, and the homeless lads. And as you proceed round on this route, you're going, like, basically a circle round Liverpool and as you come back, you come back on the same route and back to the sisters, unload your trolley and that's basically your journey out. Now Paul happened to be a very special man who founded the Mother of Mercy. 
And the little priest, he, was, uh, he died when he was 94, Father Jimmy Collins. He was apparently four foot ten and he didn't weigh much more than four foot four stone ten. Very small little man and he gave us the name the Mother of Mercy. Well, we had these white tops on with an emblem on, which I have on now. And we were quite distinctive. And as we went round, Paul was explaining to me that, what you do? And anyway, the next week came um, on the following Tuesday, we're out again. Then he said, we'll go out Tuesday and Thursday from the Sisters of Charity, Mother Teresa's people. After a while, it got a little bit complicated with the sisters doing their work. So we met Father Kenny Hyde, a priest, and he became our priest and the Mother of Mercy. Father Kenny was a Liverpool man and he knew a lot of people who he'd baptised and that. And as we went round, Father would always give the blessing if he could get out with his, from away from his duties. And we'd go round with Father and it seemed to be a bit better when he was out. And one, one particular day I remember very clearly as Father was given the blessing, it could have been my imagination, but I thought everything stopped. It was a special moment that stuck with me. I call them moments in time. And I realised what a blessing of one of God's anointed was. We went on our way twice a week then, and it was always special when Father was out with us. After a few months of doing this, Paul and I, we went off to Medjugorje and by then we'd acquired four or five helpers and we were doing it once I was going out and Paul would pray with the Blessed Sacraments and the Sisters and then it was vice versa that I'd stay in and with the Blessed Sacrament, and Paul would go out. Now, Paul got his instructions directly from the Mother of God. Our notice is that he said one day, he said, uh, Blessed Mother, says, we're not in charge, Rob, so let the troops go out, and it's the only way they'll learn. So it was taking away anything pride that we had thinking we were doing anything with it. Anyway, as it progressed, people started joining and more were playing in adoration. We by now moved into St. Patrick, which is now the oldest church in Liverpool. Founded 1828, a year before they were officially allowed to open. And I'd gone to school and I felt quite at home. So what the menu was that you went on the altar after the Mass and from the lectern you did the rosary. The troops prayed the St. Patrick's breastplate, breastplate prayer and they went out on the streets, the remainder stayed in praying and it started to grow. Amongst the homeless in the first year, 37 of them, through the grace of God, we brought in and were baptised and they became Catholics. Quite a lot of people come from broken homes and they'd never for one reason or other known God. And Paul and the sisters and myself, we were going along learning how to teach them. They just went from the catechism. 
Then we went up to Maryvale in Birmingham and did a course and we learned a little bit more, you know, on what, how to speak to them about the faith. And each year we always had three or four or five who would, as Easter, become Catholics. And we thought that was what it was all about. After a few years of doing this, I realised it was nothing to do with the homeless, it was for us. We were getting so much benefits. Now, when we'd gone off to Medjugorje, me and Paul, Paul, by then, it started suffering, and we're in Medjugorje, and it was um, the time Paul was feeling these pains and that, and Paul just roughly had been in the forces and special forces and he'd gone off around the world in this for 10 years and as I say, he came out and through the grace of God formed the Mother of Mercy. Well, we went back to Loch Dirk for the second time and Paul revealed to me that he was going to take up our suffering, apparently something to do with from Calcutta. Now, them sisters are very holy people, and they advised Paul, please don't take that vow, it's so hard. Anyway, Paul asked me one day to lock him in St. Patrick's Church, and he took up our suffering for the world, apparently, a few weeks later, he asked me to accompany him to the hospital and he was diagnosed with bone cancer, very, very severe, and his bones were like aero bars. Well, the doctor said, he, you know, if you want me to be quite frank with you, you won't be here in six months, it's gone too far. A few months later, we went back and the specialist had his head in his hands and he said to Paul, I may have to go back to school. All your bones have grew back. So Paul said to him, would God have something to do with this? What shall I do? And the specialist said to him, well, Paul, go back to work. But before Paul could go back to his job in engineering, he got a brain tumour and he was back at the hospital and then we started going over to Classerbridge Hospital, 21 chemo or radium, whatever it was, I can't quite remember which one it was. But I'd say all the roses over in between and We'd evangelise over there with the nurses and Paul would speak to the doctors. Still carrying on doing the work on the streets. And then Father Kenny moved up to St. Philomena's. So we followed him up. We left St. Patrick's after a couple of years. And we went up to... St. Philomena's. Now at St. Patrick's, it's roughly half a mile into town, so we'd be walking along with the trucks, praying the rosary on the way into town. And as we were doing the rosary, buses and cars going past, after a while, we'd, the cars would just be hooting and acknowledging what we were doing. People on the street were giving us money to buy rosaries and each pack we'd buy 250. Paul had some contact with a lady that we'd uh, gel that we'd order these rosaries and they'd come, a couple of boxes and they were going, and we'd give them out also as well as to the homeless as people going past. And Paul explained to us we wasn't only out for the homeless. 
Lapsed Catholics were walking by and it might stir their conscience slightly. So we were ordering these rosaries and they were increasing and Jill was doing a lot of business. Now in St. Philomena's, Father Kenny suddenly moved from there to the Queen of Mars's. And the priest, he didn't seem to basically um, get on with this as well. So the priest, um, Father Kevin, he wasn't like Father Kenny, who was just so natural at the Mother of Mercy. He was the Mother of Mercy priest. And Father Kevin said to me one day, um, you didn't turn the lights off the weekend, and I did, but apparently there was so mix up, and Paul advised us to take two witnesses round when we were turning them off, and Father says again, and Paul went down to see him, and Father explained to Paul, and one thing and another, and whatever was said, I wasn't present, but Paul said, sometimes God moves you on to the next place. So we followed Father Kenny to the Queen of Martyrs. After a few months there, Paul had developed some other cancer in his lungs or wherever. And in the Queen of Martyrs, he said, um, Robbie, you won't understand it now. You will in time. I've got to go in the house and pray there. And you take over and you run it, you know. So no pressure there. I said, okay. And he said, I'll pray for you from the house. So we carried on the same routine, the Blessed Sacrament, the Four Rosaries, the Angelus and the breastplate going out and the protection prayers, everything went smoothly along that way. In the meantime, Paul had developed a habit of going up to bed, eight o'clock of a night, and he had no bed in his room. Paul's a married man with four children. And all night he prayed with the souls in purgatory and he suffered tremendously. We carried on out on the street. Now, we had to go out and drive into town. And as Our Lady had arranged the game, we could do a rosary on the way roughly in half an hour. We just finished as we got there, parked up in the sisters and went on our merry way round the centre of Liverpool. In the meantime, we also had gone to St. Anthony's of Padua and were working out of there. One was in the north end of the city, the other was in the south end. So from St. Anthony's of Padua, we couldn't get the full rosy, and so we did half going there in the car and half coming back. So it worked out that we'd get it about right now. Anyway, we went along on this and it was just the same routine going round and each year we'd take four or five to the priest and they'd um, round about east and he'd bring them into the church and that was basically the routine we were doing all the time. Then Paul asked me again to go to the hospital with him in between this and we went back to the hospital and he was developing another cancer and he was losing weight and that. So in between that, Paul asked me to take six homeless lads down to Walsingham and I went and got this green... Um, they were all on drugs, these lads, basically, and this methadone green stuff in two bottles, I got that. 
Anyway, when we stopped in Birmingham on the way back, I went to Soilus and I heard him speak and then the next he's got it in the car and one of you. So we got into Walsingham and Sense and that. And the next morning I had to give them 60 milligram or 80 milligram according to the name. And I was growing a little bit in my faith and they were arguing over, I haven't given them an enough and what have you, and they're rough and ready lads like myself. And I said, okay. And this night I decided to put holy water in the methadone. And then I could give them a bit more. And I thought, in my ignorance, of that it would probably cure them of that, you know. Anyway, them six lads I took down there, they were a bit obstropolous, but the six of them, when they came back, came off the streets. I was going along one day in Liverpool in the car, and this saxy kept chasing me, and I jumped out in the end, and he, he was one of the lads, Alan, and he, he said, Robbie, thanks very much, and he was working, driving the cabs and that. And that gave us a great feeling, you know, and uh, you think you've got so much to do. It's all God's work anyway, praise the Lord. The next major thing that happened was with Paul. We went off again. Um, where was it we went? Locked Egg or well, whatever. Locked Egg, I think it was, we went... And the day we were going, we'd paid, you know, the lad who was going, so only coppers and that, you know, and then me and Paul couldn't go. And um, Paul took a, a bit bad and back to the hospital. And then he was kept in the hospital in the Royal. And I remember in his testimony, which he gave at the Catholic Conference, Paul explained that when he was in hospital, this homeless lad who used to draw little pictures and that, he was up all night in this tent he had, and he drew some pictures. And the nurse came in to Paul in the intensive care and said, Paul, there's a man outside, but he's a bit... Um, could he use the word uh, smelly? And Paul said, let him in. And this lad came in and Paul said, the first thing he said is, I've done you these pictures. And Paul turned around and he says, that lad had been up all night and he'd done these little pictures for me. He said he was amateurish and that, he said, but that was his offering to me. And as he was leaving, he said, Paul, what about your grapes there? You're eating them. He said, no, you have them. He said, the oranges, take them as well. He said, I was so grateful that he'd come in. He said, but when I looked at him, he said, I could see Jesus in that man. And God was showing me something. He said, well, being a bit ill at the time, I wasn't sure whether it was me or my imagination or that, but he said, I've seen Jesus in that man. I used to visit Paul and listen to what was going on in there. Anyway, he's miraculously healed again. And all his cancers have gone. Now, having bone cancer, I don't know what the medical terms are, but these, the average life is about six years and that. And Paul went on for about 11 years of that with this illnesses and that. But I think it was his illness that was giving us success out on the street because people were joining and it was growing and I realise now with hindsight that the ones who joined were always 
people that God put in place in this respect. We need it to become a charity. And he sends Jane from the tax office. So she did it for us, all the paperwork and sorted it. Jimmy Gallagher, he was born in Ireland, Jimmy, and Jimmy could do all the printing and that on the computer and laminated stuff and that. And so we had the prayers and everything. It was seeming to be more organised and with the people who were coming along and each one from the weakest of us to the top, the strongest in the professions. It was all planned by God, every bit of it. We were still working out of St. Anthony's and another father, Kevin, came there and he was asking us to move our stuff round and, and he couldn't do Friday and I went up to Father Peter Morgan, who has the asylum seekers in his, and it's near to the centre of the city. And I asked Father Peter, could we use his on a Friday? And then Father Kevin said, you can't do all of August, I'm understaffed or whatever. And I said to Father Peter, could we do August? And he said, Robbie. Blessed Mum, once you were here permanent, so we moved to St. Hans and St. Bernard's, where we're based at the moment. We do the Friday out of there and the Tuesday out of the Queen of Martyrs. Father Peace is well known for his work with the poor, and so it seemed as if it was God's sense, like where we were at the time. And so that brings us more or less up to date in the work we're doing on the streets and the best way I could describe it is to give out on average about 25,000 rosaries and for our lady to supply the money because where we're different than other groups is in the respect of we provide the food in our sins. We don't take anything off councils or that. So basically, they can't tell you what to do. And sisters, Mother Teresa, are the same. They don't accept anything. So we rely totally on our blessed Lord to look after us and his Holy Mother, because that's the name we have. We go around with prayers, and that's all we offer to people. Seems quite successful in that regard, you know. And we feed them nourishing food, and people say we're not social workers, and that which uh, Paul always sold us. The only thing I could say is Paul was an ordinary man from Kirby, and with his illness and that, he died at 50 years of age. And I visited him on occasions in the hospice. I had a cousin, Marcia, who was one of the holiest women I ever knew. And when Mother Teresa visited Liverpool in 1978, out of 2,000 people in the cathedral, she went over to Marcy. And Paul asked me one night coming off my, we used to do a couple of nights a week in these sisters in between the Mother of Mercy, just basically make sure the sisters were safe. They had 16 lads staying and we'd give them the breakfast and whatever. And there was one lad, he was a Scottish lad, and he's a little bit of a lad, and he was getting on my nerves one night, and I said to Paul, he's going too far, Paul. 
And Paul said, he's closer to God than you, Rob. That lad died the next morning. Whether Paul knew something I didn't, so I don't know. But you learn something every day. And when we were doing the mission, the, te- the sisters were teaching other lads, and they bring them in in evangelising, and they were always made us very welcome. We're doing a couple of days there. And then Saturday we'd go down and they'd feed the, a good meal and that, which was the same sort of thing as to do, and it was, and they'd pray with them and prayers before and after. As I say, with Paul, he asked me to take me to Marcy's one morning after the mission. He walked and Marcy knelt down. Marcy could have been out of that. So Marcy and Paul walked in and Marcy knelt down and he said to Marcy, um, who had terrible throat cancer and she was in a bad way and they hadn't given along and Paul turned around and he says, Marcy, you've just finished an Ovena to Martin de Paul's. You finished it last night, son. He said he was in my room last night and it's granted. And Paul placed his hands round Marcy and when she went back to the hospital, he said, you don't need the operation. And Marcy lived another 10 years. Now I had taken these lads, Irish lads, who were massive Medjugorje, Steve McCloskey and Big Fraud and Tommy Tolan and them. I met them there and they became good friends. I think I met them in 2012. I remember vividly Steve McCloskey, the Holy Spirit, hitting on me and little girl Rebecca was praying. She's now a Carmelite sister. And I became very friendly with Steve and I'd come over to Belfast, visit him and when he came to Liverpool, he'd come out in the street with us with Spider and them. Um, we call him Spider, his name's Thomas. Tommy Tolan. Anyway, I went back to Medjugorje with these Irish lads and while we were in Medjugorje, Paul had asked me to get 50 rosaries. They were five euros each. I knew the lady in the shop, Maria. And I went in the day before we were due back and she always had them and she said, Rob, I've got none in. I walked out of that shop with them Irish lads and they're witness to this. Paul phoned me from Liverpool. He said, go back in that shop, he said, and Tell Maria these 50 roses on the second shelf in the back. It wasn't until I came out I realised how did Paul know this. And it was things like that that made me think all the suffering and that was very special. Now just to sum up and finish on that, Marcy, Paul and Jimmy Gallagher all died in the same bed and I'd become a Eucharistic minister and I used to take communion and I knew the nurses pretty well. And When I went in, the sister said to me, this seems to be the bed of suffering because you knew the friends of mine who died there. Now in the meantime, Steve McCloskey had gone back and through the grace of God, he couldn't do what we do in Liverpool, but he founded the Divine Mercy Group in North Belfast, the Sacred Heart Church. And I was now visiting Belfast pretty frequently and vice versa. While I was in Medjugorje at that time, I must add that there was a procession and through the grace of the Blessed Mother, we decided to do that in Liverpool. And these Irish lads, on many an occasion, 
with the cloud of 1,000 and the archbishop at the front, we were going round doing the rosaries and then um, with the sisters, they organised all that. But it was growing and everything was quite happy. And in the meantime, Stephen was flourishing in the divine mercy over at Belfast. And then it became live streaming and we used to watch um, Stephen had sent me the link and we'd start watching him. Um, I think, um, I, I could be wrong, I think that was the time Father Frank um, arrived, um, a priest from uh, Glasgow, I think a Scottish priest. Um, and we were friends, I'd been down and I think I met him in the Divine Mercy and uh, we became f quite good friends. And Stephen McCloskey is an ordinary man, like myself. And in 1987, Pope John Paul II, St. John Paul II, said, with this priest at the minute, there's a bit of a shortage and lay people can step forward. And we didn't know what he was talking about, but God brings you forward. He brought Stephen McCloskey and the crowd forward with the divine mercy. And it's amazing that when you visit the likes of the divine mercy in Belfast, and the crowd and they arrange a little sandwich, a cup of tea and the biscuits afterwards, quite like, like what we do. And there's a community growing there. Now, that basically is summing up like where we are at at this minute. I would just like to add a personal note on this, and it would be this. There's been a little bit over in England, the shortage of your priest. Pray for your holy priest. We need priests more than ever. We need holy priests. Without them, our faith will vanish. God bless.